Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's Jimmy Dore Show. Guess who's here? It's Steph Zavarato, the miserable liberal, and the political vigilante, Graham Elwood. Hey, Graham. Hello. I'm miserable. Yes. <laughs> Look, she's got the Donna Tonahan's T-shirt on, though. Let's see that T-shirt. Yeah, I don't know. It's like she does this with her. Well, it's his tiny hands. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. That's tiny what I'm hands. Doing. Okay. I'm trying to show them the proportions. And you can get those T-shirts right down there. Listen, we had a big special election in Georgia's six. Uh, this guy, John Ossoff, he was the Democratic hopeful, right? John Ossoff. Now, it. He, you want to see his campaign commercial? Now he lost, right? Now, he lost, and I wonder why he lost. He's a Democrat running in a red district. Let's see what his campaign was all about. Let's see what it was about. How do we keep Metro Atlanta's economy growing? I'm John Ossoff, and we have to look at how it's all connected. Places like the CDC drive innovation with advanced research. Our universities and tech schools train our talented young people. And entrepreneurs create good jobs, like in the Alpharetta Tech Corridor. That's why in Congress, I'll work to cut wasteful spending and prioritize high-tech research. I approve this message because it's all connected. So if you run a campaign about nothing, it turns out people won't vote for you. John Ossoff did worse than Hillary Clinton in that district. Why? She ran against this. You know what this is? This is I'm not Trump. That's what that is. Doing even worse six months later. Or what is it now? Eight months? Doing the I'm not Trump. That's what that is. I'm not Trump, right, ladies? That's what that is. Nothing. And what I said was that a, a, you got a Democrat who's against single payer and against taxing the wealthy. He lost to a Republican who's also against single payer and taxing the wealthy. Oh, so if you run a re so when the voters are given the choice between a Republican and a Republican, they choose the Republican every goddamn time. That's why he did even worse than Hillary friggin Clinton. What, Over you, to you. He, he didn't feel inspired by all those photos of buildings. <laughs> I, I thought it was great to see that laser go through all of these buildings yeah. that don't give a shit yeah. about working class people. Yeah, it was fantastic. I, hey, rich, white collar, college educated people, you're going to get taken care of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I you know, it was as if the message was to inspire entrepreneurs to come out and vote. So this this is so. um that just felt like an ad for like a tax break to bring your business to Georgia. It didn't felt like a campaign at all. <laughs> that doesn't feel like a campaign. You know what that felt like? That felt like uh, you're trying to get me to, to uh, apply to your college. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what that felt like. Or you're like, it's one of those ads they play in the middle of like a college sporting event. Yeah. Like the University of Georgia, technology. <laughs> yes. Arts. It does. You know, it sounds like, right? Oh, yeah. but that's interesting. There is no mention of arts. There oh. is no mention of anything that might make a person's life better. It's all this like corporatist. Yes. He's a corporatist. So this this mm. is the democratic message of get educated. Education will save us. If you if you don't have the job you want, get a better education. Instead of like, oh, maybe we should have jobs for blue collar people. Maybe we should have a safety net. Maybe we should figure out how we manufacture stuff in America instead of shipping all our good jobs to other people in poorer countries and more desperate situations. That's what the liberal elite has been doing. They yes. have been selling out the working class people and all they have been doing is saying, yay, isn't globalization great? Hey, who give? sorry, working class people, just go to college even though you, we don't provide you the infrastructure of good public schools and access to college. But hey, we're rich. Yep. Yeah. He, was it's, there anything in this that talked about uh, a livable wage? No. There's. No, I, I'm telling you, the guy doesn't care about anything. He, he just wanted to be not Trump. Now I don't know anything about John Ossoff's, you know, insides. You know, I don't know his character. I don't know what he really thinks. I know he's 30 years old, and I know you got to be a special kind of person to know what the hell's going on when you're 30 years old and what you want to do, right? So hopefully he's that kind of guy. But it turns out, no, because if you watch this commercial, it's about nothing. Here, let's watch it again. Here it is. How do we keep Metro Atlanta's economy growing? I'm John Ossoff, and we have to look at how it's all connected. Places like the CDC drive innovation with advanced research. Our universities and tech schools train our talented young people. 
And on- Look at all those cool buildings. You're right, Steph. Wow. Those are a lot of cool buildings. Not one fucking person in that. Not one person. Not him showing helping someone or implementing a- nothing. If he shows me one more big building with something like glitzy <laughs> swirling around it, he's got my vote. Every single one of those buildings requires you to eat, to have a fancy college degree, requires you to have access, big universities. So if you're a working class Georgian, you're like, oh, you just told me you don't give a shit about me. So I might as well at least go for the lady that's going to let me have a gun. So what... Oh, you are correct. You are correct. Um, and by the way, so, you know, the Democrats always, the reason why the Democrats, the DNC, after they lost to Trump, moved to the right. <laughs> How did they do that, Jimmy? They decided to start taking corporate money again. So Barack Obama, one one of the things he instituted was no more lobbyist money at the DNC. They got rid of that. They moved to the right. And why? Because Tom Perez said, you can't bring a spoon to a knife fight, meaning you can't. You can't show up to an election without a bunch of corporate money. Bernie Sanders showed them that that's all bullshit, and they ignored it because they go, he lost. But you cheated him, right? You had to cheat the guy who didn't take corporate money? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's that's so what they're saying. So that's more. So he raised and spent more money than she did in that race. Still didn't win. He spent a lot more money. In fact, here's the Good Morning America guy. The career politician who was vastly outspent by her opponent and didn't get half of his adulation is heading to Washington. That sounds familiar. When did that happen again? When did that happen before? When did that ever happen? When did the Democrat ever vastly outspend their opponent and still get lose and not go to Washington? Oh, wait a minute. That was 2016, this presidential election. That's right. Hillary Clinton outspend Donald Trump two to one. So did the Democrats decide that we should keep implementing those same strategies that we lost with? Yes, that is exactly what they're doing. Excellent. So... (laughs) So That's here's the strat. So this strategy, by the way, so that there and everyone's like, see, the Democrats can't beat Trump. So when they do run a progress, well, first of all, here's the strategy that they're employing. This is the strategy that they're employing. This is the Democratic strategy that's losing for them. For every blue collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three. Uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And you can repeat that in Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin. Uh, That's the Democratic leader in the Senate. That was their strategy. That's still their strategy. How did it work out? They moved to the right in 2010. They lost. They moved even further right in 2012. Lost again. They moved to the right in 2014. Lost again. And they moved to the right in 2016. Complete wipeout. Thousand seats in, in, across the country. State houses. They lost the governorships. They lost the Congress. They lost the Senate. And they lost the presidency. 2017, they moved to the right again. And they lost again. John Ossoff is a move to the right. He's a corporate Democrat. In fact, Joanne Reed tweeted this out. Here's what Joanne Reed tweeted out. John Ossoff ran quite a strong campaign, but short of actually being a Republican, there's nothing more he could have done. What? Maybe give them a fucking option. Maybe explain to the people in Georgia's 6th district how progressive policies are actually better for the economy and better for people, better for education, better for climate change, better for their economy, better for the country, better for the everything. How about you make that case? No, no, no. What The way we're going to win is become Republicans. That's the opposite of why you should have a party. Well, but it's in a red state. It's in a red district. Hillary lost that district by 1%. Hillary lost that district by 1.5%. This guy, John Ossoff, lost it by 4%. (laughs) So this is, again, when offered the opportunity to vote for a Republican or a Republican, they choose the Republican every goddamn time. So this is what this is. They're implementing Chuck Schumer's strategy. 
He's not for he's not for single payer. He's he's not for ending the wars. He's not for a living wage. He's basically I'm not Trump. I'm going to be polite to women. That was his strategy. I'm going to be polite to women. How's that how's that work out for you? You did worse than Hillary Clinton. Worse than Hillary Clinton in a red district. You did worse than her. That's how bad that is. So guess, but guess what? The Democrats decided to dump a shit ton of money into that one. When there's a progressive running in a red district, they won't put any money into it. Like Thompson in Kansas. Right. They wouldn't put any money into that race. But we got a corporate neoliberal running in a red district. DNC couldn't throw in. I think they spent $4 million on that race. Thompson was asking for $20,000 in Kansas. They wouldn't give it to him. <laughs> So this is what this is. Kujoy Reed, she's the mouthpiece of the corporate Democrats. She's the smearer of progressives. She works for MSNBC, and that's who she is. So just everyone knows who Joanne Reed is. She's a person who lies at the top of her lungs to smear progressives. She has no integrity. She's your typical MSNBC host. If you pay me $30,000 a day, I'll say whatever the hell you want, and I won't say a lot of other stuff that you don't want me to say. That's who Rachel Maddow is. That's who Chris Hayes is. That's who Chris Matthews is. That's what MS. And now they're just going ahead and hiring right-wingers. They're just hiring Fox News hosts now. So we don't have to, maybe we don't have to give you that much money. Maybe we don't have to spend that much money. Maybe you'll just give us talking points. So uh, there you go. That's what's wrong with the Democratic Party. They think the way to win in red districts is to become Republican. Bernie Sanders proved that's wrong. Right-wingers will vote for Bernie Sanders because he's unbought. They will not vote for a corporate neoliberal. That's why that guy, John Ossoff, did worse than Hillary Clinton. Go ahead, over to you. Well, I think the guy in Kansas, if he wanted to get uh, some money, he should have just made a video where there's lasers going through corporate Disneyland, uh, telling everybody how great it is to be a corporate person with a college degree that uh, takes uh, money from the middle and poor classes. I think we also have to get away from the idea that uh, somebody has run a strong campaign and they've lost. (laughs) Can we stop saying that they've run a strong campaign? And they've lost. So... Here, but here, here's the real problem. So not only did they run a neoliberal guy with no, we showed you his camp commercial, has absolutely nothing to say. His campaign was bleh, nothing, just like Hillary Clinton's, and he did even worse. Do you want so here's now here and here's the conclusion. So when you run a neoliberal, when you run a corporatist who's not looking out for the people, who's not for a living wage, who's not for free college tuition free college, who's not for ending the wars, who's not for single payer, when you do that, you get beat worse than Hillary Clinton got beat, and it's a victory for Trump. Why to hear it? This is how it's being reported on Good Morning America. <laughs> Democrats across the country who invested hope and millions of dollars in the race and wanted a little payback for November will have to regroup. The president is a little stronger this morning. You make him stronger. When Tom Perez became the DNC chair, you made Trump stronger. When you don't fund a progressive running in Kansas and he loses, you make Trump stronger. When you do fund a corporatist neoliberal in Georgia and he loses, you make Trump stronger. And why else did this guy lose? Do you want to hear the real other real reason this guy lost? Ossoff's unforced error was where he lives, which is outside the district. David... Ah, we got a corporatist who gets most of his money from outside the district and he doesn't even live in the district. You And he has no plan to help people. I wonder why he didn't win. That sounds like a strong campaign. Strong campaign. Hey, let's get someone who doesn't live here. Uh, doesn't doesn't know anybody here. Let's get someone who doesn't live here, who gets most of his funding from outside our district and doesn't offer us anything. No change. Let's see what happens. <laughs> It's like uh, we're going to hire a head coach who has uh, no football experience, but he's uh, and then when his team goes zero and sixteen, we're saying that was a strong season. That was a solid yeah, season. It was really good. He had a lot of baseball experience, but I thought that applied well to the National Football <laughs> League. So, 
The guy didn't even live in the goddamn district. And the <laughs> Democrats couldn't pu put more money. The DNC, tri D Triple C, couldn't put enough money in there. He outspent her. He had $23 million, John Ossoff. In a congressional district. By the way, the most expensive congressional race in history. Democrats still lost. And he vastly outspent her. You heard the Gia Good Morning America reporter. Vastly outspent her. Had way more adulation. Still lost. Why? Because he didn't offer them anything. The guy's good looking. He's pretty. He's got a strong jaw. Looks good in a suit. Has great speaking voice. His commercial looks like it came from a college for a college. Mm -hmm. Still lost. You got a 75-year-old Jewish guy with a JCPenney suit and no hair. Somehow he got 70,000 people out to stadiums. Somehow he got 46% of the Democratic vote in the primary, even being cheated and having the entire establishment news media against him and every elected Democrat against him. Somehow that guy still kicked ass hard with zero name recognition. Made up a 60-point lead. Why? Because he had policies that actually helped people. And the Democrats are not changing. They are not changing. This is the race they funded. Hey, the next live Jimmy Dore show is July 17th. That's right. July 17th. That's Monday in Burbank, California. Get your tickets right down here or go to JimmyDoreComedy.com. July 17th, Burbank, California. Live Jimmy Dore show.